Welcome to section one of renal embryology. In this section, we'll be discussing the normal development of the renal system. Let's get started. This is the embryo overview figure described in detail in section one of the reproductive embryology chapter. And you can see a lateral view of the fetus right here. We would see something like this around week 12 after most organs have differentiated. But for our discussion, we're gonna go to an earlier point around weeks four to five when the nephrogenic cord gives rise to the renal system. So let's go to a new diagram to show that nephrogenic cord. So you can see the nephrogenic cord labeled right here. And this comes from the intermediate mesoderm. And it runs this length from top to bottom. And this nephrogenic cord develops into the renal system by going through three different stages. The pronephro stage, the mesonephro stage, and the metanephro stage. This table will help us work through the stages of kidney development with important notes about their timing during development and certain defining features. The stage is listed on the left column, and when the stage occurs, or the timing, is described in the middle column, and the description of the stage is shown in the right column. So let's dive into the pronephros. The pronephros develops and degenerates during week four of gestation, so it doesn't last very long. And it doesn't serve a filtration function because it doesn't actually excrete any filtered material. It's non-functional. Going back to this image, we can see the pronephros right here, and this degenerates within week four of embryogenesis. So let's move on to the next section, the mesonephros. The mesonephros develops around week five, and unlike the non-functional pronephros, the mesonephros functions as a temporary kidney, and it performs this filtration function until it regresses around week 16. But one of the most important parts of the mesonephros is the mesonephric duct that it forms. This duct acts as the early filtration drain, so it drains that urine. Eventually, the mesonephric duct will degenerate, and in so doing, it will form the Wolfian duct, which goes on to form the internal male genitalia, all except for the prostate. Now, the details surrounding the development of internal male genitalia is discussed in the reproductive embryology chapter. The last item to know about the mesonephros is that the mesonephric duct gives rise to the ureteric bud, and we'll discuss this in more detail when we discuss the metonephros. Going back to this image, we can see the mesonephros, and it forms these structures, which serve as an early filtration system. And it also forms the mesonephric duct, which continues downward to the cloaca. The cloaca is the early structure that drains the urine, and it will eventually become the bladder. And the role of the mesonephros as a urinary structure doesn't continue beyond week 16. As we've written here, it really functions between weeks 5 and 16. Now let's turn our attention over to the metanephros. And I want to start talking about the metanephros here while discussing the mesonephros because there's some overlap here. And that's because this mesonephric duct plays a critical role in the formation of the metanephros. So here's what happens. Some intermediate mesoderm forms what's called the metanephric mesoderm, which you can see labeled right here. This is also called the metanephric blastema. This metanephric mesoderm will then release signals that cause a part of the mesonephric duct to branch out. So this duct here produces this branching out of the ureteric bud. And the ureteric bud starts releasing its own signals, which then stimulate the metanephric mesoderm to continue to develop. And this process goes forward, causing both the ureteric bud and the metanephric mesoderm to fully develop and mature into kidneys. And this interaction is called reciprocal induction. Going back to the table, we have written that the mesonephric duct, which we described with the mesonephros on the previous slide, and the metanephric mesoderm will interact in a process called reciprocal induction. And as we already described, the mesonephric duct will give rise to the ureteric bud. And just so you know, another name for the ureteric bud is the metanephrogenic diverticulum. So you can think of that budding out from the mesonephric duct as a diverticulum. But just remember that both of these terms are interchangeable. Eventually, the ureteric bud becomes the collecting system. So it will form the structures all the way between the collecting duct of the nephrons all the way down to the ureter. Now let's jump over to that other structure. The metanephric mesoderm will actually form the filtration system. So all the structures between the glomerulus to the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron. So again, the metanephric mesoderm will become the filtration system, and the ureteric bud will become the collecting system. To help you visualize this, we've shown the adult structure on the right here. So from the left image, we see this brown metanephric mesoderm, this little brown circle here, becoming the kidney, specifically the filtration system. And to help reinforce this idea, we've written metanephric mesoderm right here. And this includes everything from the glomerulus to the distal convoluted tubule. And this ureteric bud, this pale pink thing will form the collection system, which has maintained that pale pink color in this diagram. And this forms the collection system. And this includes everything from the collecting ducts, which you can see here coming off that nephron, and all the way down to the ureter, which of course includes the calyces and the renal pelvis. 
going back to the table, we want to point out that the metanephros starts forming around week five. So obviously there's overlap between the metanephros and the mesonephros, which hopefully makes sense to you by now because of that reciprocal induction. And the metanephros is fully canalized and functional by week 10. And the metanephros, ultimately forming the mature kidney, will then migrate from the pelvis to the lumbar region. So there's a lot of changes during this time. So let's summarize the urine filtration throughout pregnancy. During the first trimester, urine travels down the mesonephric duct and into the cloaca. This is something we already discussed. But once in the cloaca, the urine will travel to the umbilical cord, and it does this through the allantois. And during this first trimester, the allantois becomes the urachus. So we show this as allantois slash urachus. So the urine will travel through the allantois or urachus, depending on which week of the first trimester we're dealing with, and then the urine will be carried to the umbilical cord, where the placenta and the mother will receive the urine. Now let's talk about the second and third trimesters. During this time, the metanephros forms the kidneys, the mesonephric ducts form the ureters, and the cloaca becomes the bladder as well as the urethra, and so the urine can travel from the kidney to the ureter to the bladder to the urethra, which is what we expect in the adult urinary system, and from the urethra it enters the amniotic fluid. This image demonstrates urine during the first trimester. It flows down this mesonephric duct into the cloaca and then out the allantois or urachus, depending on which week during the first trimester you're dealing with. And then it just enters the umbilical cord. Now this image demonstrates urine during the second and third trimesters. By this point, the kidney and ureter have formed and so has the bladder and urethra. And so urine can be excreted out the urethra and into the amniotic fluid. Now look at this urachus. Let's talk about that a little more. The urachus connects the bladder to the umbilicus, which we've shown, and normally it obliterates during the second trimester, and eventually it will become the median umbilical ligament in adults. If there's a failure to obliterate, this can lead to various pathologies, all of which increase the risk of infection and adenocarcinoma of the bladder. The first type is a patent urachus, and the name is self-explanatory. If the urachus is patent, then the bladder can expel urine from the umbilicus. And if you have urine abnormally spilling out of this structure, then it makes sense that there would be an increased risk of infection. And also, there's an increased risk of adenocarcinoma, as we just mentioned. Another pathology is a urachal cyst. And what's interesting about this, in addition to being a nidus for infection and cancer, it's actually a painful mass. And lastly, there's a vesico-urachal diverticulum. And put simply, this is the bladder outpouching. Let's show what these look like. This image shows the four different outcomes. One, the normal and expected outcome, plus three pathologies. On this normal one, we can see the umbilicus, and the urachus has degenerated and has become the median umbilical ligament. If you look at the patent urachus, you can see that urine can go straight from the bladder and out. So urine can come out the umbilicus. And if you look at the urachal diverticulum, you can see this bladder outpouching right here. So it's like the urachus partially obliterated, but not quite. So you get this outpouching of the bladder. And finally, a urachal cyst is a partial obliteration, but you get this one part that isn't. And again, all three of these come with an increased risk of infection and an increased risk of adenocarcinoma of the bladder, which is a cancer of the dome of the bladder, which makes sense because it's that dome up at the top where the urachus attaches. Now let's do a quick question to apply what you've learned. A researcher is studying the transporters on the proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron. What embryological structure gave rise to the proximal convoluted tubule? Well, the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT, is part of the filtration system because it's part of the nephron. And what structure gave rise to the filtration system? The metanephric mesoderm. And you can see that clearly here. The metanephric mesoderm eventually becomes the filtration system, and part of the nephron is the PCT. And that concludes this section.